Welcome back now with one million Irish workers set to reach retirement age by 2048. I think I'm in that mix. Uh, <laughs> over 50% of the population say they feel completely unprepared for what can be a big adjustment. Indeed it is. And joining us this morning with advice on how to move to life after work is Chief Operations Officer at the Retirement Planning Council of Ireland, Derek Bell. Good morning to you, Derek. Good morning. Before we go through the steps and what's involved, what is the typical retirement age these days? Because it has changed over the last few years, hasn't it? The answer to that is there is no typical retirement age, just there is, a, there is no typical person. People retire at different ages, maybe it's health, maybe it's their contract of employment, maybe they're self-employed and they have no actual retirement date set. Mm -hmm. So there's a variety of ways and ages at which people retire. But is there an expectation that at 65... Most, most people, most people's contract of employment would have a 65 retirement date and that's the date that they retire. Okay. The difficulty they then encounter is that the state pension isn't paid until age 66. Mm -hmm. right. So they have a year to bridge. Now if they're in private employment, uh, paying a Class A PRSI stamp, they will qualify for job seekers, mm. which will be paid for that 12 months. But if they're self-employed or in any other class of stamp, they may have a difficulty with a financial drop for that yeah. period. We'll talk about the finances in, in, in a couple of moments, Derek, but just to, to, when you are preparing for this, it's a huge psychological leap, exactly. right, to go from 40 hours a week, you know, turning up at the office, doing whatever your job is, to actually standing there going, well, what do I do now? Yeah. So, um, is there a kind of, uh, what would be the, 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 I suppose the, the initial advice you would give for people kind of getting ready to retire? Yeah. Firstly, it's more than 40 hours because you've got commute time in there sure. as well. Mm -hmm. And it's every week for the rest of your life. But really the thing is to try and plan that transition. So if you can negotiate three-day week or a four-day week, you're easing yourself into it. Yeah. And if you can retire early in the year, spring, early summer, you make the transition much more easily than if you retire in autumn or winter. The days are longer, the days are brighter, people are out and about doing things, and that transition becomes easier. So you're not staring out the window looking at the rain. Yeah, dark, wet November day. <laughs> no, tough. wrong time. Yeah, tough. Yeah. It's yeah. interesting, though, because people might not have considered mm. what season they retire yeah. in, but actually it is very important. Yeah, and it's not always, not always possible. You know, some companies, some organisations will say, that's your birthday, that's the date on which you retire. Mm. Others will be quite flexible and let you retire at a time that suits you. Yeah, yeah. So I suppose, if, if, if let's say you are planning to retire in, in spring, summer, um, you still will want to have something fixed in your mind that you're going to focus on. So, what, take up a hobby? Find yeah, you need to do. a plan, basically. Yeah. So it might be take up a hobby, it might be work again in some capacity, it might be volunteering, it might be travel, it might be family. Yeah. There's a million and one things that you might do. Yeah. But you need to know what you want to do. And you need, we would recommend, to plan for chunks of time. So it's not saying, oh, it's 17 minutes past, I'd better do. Mm. It's saying, on Wednesday morning, I'm going swimming. Yes, OK. okay? Yeah. And to be precious with that time, mm. that if you give away your time, people will assume that you have all the time to give, so you have nothing else to do. Yeah. Yeah. So create almost a diary for yourself yes, where your you week. swim or walk every Wednesday whatever morning. It whatever it you've earned this time as well, so yeah, don't know who will take it away it. from you. Now, speaking of earning it, I think the biggest consideration for anybody retiring, and I'm 20 years away from retirement, and my lovely wife is focusing my mind on this, you need to have yourself financially prepared to do it. And it's no mean feat, is it? It's not. And, and you know, it, things have changed and pensions are changing from defined benefit to defined contribution. Beautiful defined benefit mm. pension. We'll never see her likes again. Unlikely to. Yeah. yeah, very unlikely to. But you do need to think about your retirement. You do need to plan. And unless you know what you want to do in retirement, you don't know how much money you're going to need. Mm. A lot of people would worry about their finances. But in reality, their, their net pay may not be that different in that they will be taking less in in terms of pension, mm. but they will also be paying less tax. Mm. And the net position may not be that different. But le le let's take uh, people who are 20 years out from retirement. Yeah. I mean, th 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 when you say retirement, retirement planning, it does actually start like now. Way back. Doesn't Way it? Back, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, what should we be doing at, at, at our phase of life? Well, you should review your finances. You should see what you can afford to put away. And probably the easiest way to do that is to set up a standing order. In other words, you never have the money to spend. <laughs> yes. It gets out of your account before you, you get your, your mitts on it. it. Yeah. Yeah. And for younger people as well, starting off their first job, it's never too early, is it, never to sign up to a pension? No, the earlier the better. Mm. Yeah. 
Mm. Absolutely. The only yeah, way. okay. Um, Developing bad habits, I thought this was, was an yeah. interesting one because I would imagine you, you've had this all-consuming job yep. and you've had no spare time almost to yourself. Then you've got every day is wide open. Yeah. Um, and it is easy to... I even laughed to myself because this is like a maternity leave thing, mm. grazing during the day when yeah. it's not even meal time, but yeah. you're at home, so it's yeah. easy to do. And you're looking at the clock and saying, I've got to be over there in 40 minutes. Sure, it's not worth starting anything else. I'll make another pot of coffee. Mm. I'll grab a handful of biscuits. Mm. And suddenly the habits are there. The other side of that is I don't have to be up in the morning. Mm. So I can watch the movie till 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. And sure, let's open another bottle of wine while we're watching it. Yeah. And suddenly there's all sorts of bad habits it's in there. Slippery slope, isn't yeah. it? Yes. Press record, you can watch it at a you know, one. So, 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 so so discipline, as we say in other discipline, country. Yeah. Yeah. It is yeah. important, though, isn't it, to ask yourself, would I do that if I was still working? Absolutely. And is it healthy? Yeah. Yeah. Now, the other side of things is that if you are, if you have reached the age of retirement, the chances are you will have worked for 40 years and you'll have developed a huge number of skills you that will. are very transferable mm. and, and perhaps useful in the community, for a sports organisation, whatever it may be. So that's a very kind of positive thing to do to offer your time that way, isn't it? Absolutely. And identifying your skills is difficult for some people. The easiest way to do that is to think, what do I enjoy doing mm. and what skills do I use when I'm doing what I enjoy? Yeah. So you identify your skills and then you think, where could these skills be applied? Mm. And people would say, well, I'm going to volunteer with such and such an organisation. And I would say, only volunteer with organisations that you identify with. Yeah. So the kind of image I have in my head is I'm walking down Grafton Street and people are shaking boxes under my nose every few yards. Some boxes I will contribute to, some boxes I will happily walk past. Mm. Think of the boxes that you would contribute to mm. because you identify in some way with that organisation. Put it another way, there's no point in volunteering to rescue cats mm -hmm. if you're really interested in third world poverty. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I think also uh, the husband or the wife will often recognise the skills in the partner before Absolutely. you recognise them in yourself. Yeah, but there's also there, you mustn't forget that an awful lot of people in society are single. Mm -hmm. So they need to have a friend or a family member who will fill that partner role. Of course. But yeah, uh, the word to, I suppose to watch out for, be careful about in retirement, is the word should. Lots of people will tell you as a retired person what you should be doing. Yes. That tends to be their agenda and not and yours. Not yours. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Derek, of course, you do run uh, uh, courses that uh, help people to plan we their retirement. We do. Well, yeah, so we yeah. run two day courses mm. in Dublin and around the country okay. uh, for people sort of two years to 18 months away from their retirement date. Yeah. Talking through the changes that will happen identity, relationships, mm. you know, what really is going to affect, be affected by this retirement, yeah, yeah. looking at financial planning, tax planning, social welfare, looking at legal matters, have you made it's, a will, it, have it, you reviewed it, your it, will? It is a complicated it's process. A, it's a long process, there are a lot yeah. of things to think about. Derek, so, thank you very much for your time. Not at all. Very welcome. Thank, thank you. you.